cases that um, certainly a lot of our clients are getting interested and excited about, uh, probably into three or four buckets, right? So the first of those is everything around design productivity, right? So the thing that's very cool about um, Gen AI, and in fact, AI more broadly, is it allows you to start to automate some of the tasks which take engineers and architects a lot of time at the moment, but don't necessarily add huge amounts of values. So that might be, you know, generating design specifications. It might be about deciding exactly how high off the ground the door handle should be, right? And the great thing about design optimization is it creates capacity with engineers and architects to really focus on the highly complex novel problems, right? Which is which is quite an exciting opportunity. I think the, the other kind of big collection of use cases we see is everything around planning and scheduling. So, um, yeah, planning and the construction planning is typically a bit of a dark art in construction. Um, there are some science behind it, but it's definitely has elements of being a dark art. and that's borne out with some of the um, you know, scheduled adherence we see typically in, in construction and infrastructure projects with, with projects typically running over budget and over time. There, there are tools out there and companies out there that actually um, use AI to learn from historic project delivery to improve the accuracy of scheduled forecasting and actually do that almost in real time. So you know, day by day or week by week, you're coming up with a more accurate view of the schedule and, and actually recommendations on how you might redeploy resources with a, the with a schedule. Some of the, the most exciting opportunities and most disruptive are uh, looking at the impact of environmental uh, impact on, on design and feasibility. So looking at future scenarios where flooding, uh, wind storms, um, excessive heat will impact on a concept. So as we help clients and we help uh, design and engineering companies plan ahead and think of the optimal design, there are so many different scenarios that we can now generate um, using AI to really um, think ahead of the future and make sure that these assets, these important uh, buildings that are getting constructed or uh, road infrastructures are gonna stand the test of time. The engineering challenges we have a, a, a more complex than what we've ever seen before over the next 30 to 50 years, right? When we talk about the, the decarbonisation challenge. And we're trying to do that when we've got a capacity constraint in the industry. We don't have enough engineers, we don't have enough architects, we don't have enough capacity in the construction industry. Gen AI, AI and actually digital tools more broadly are a way of bridging that productivity gap. Look, this isn't the panacea for all, all solutions. There are going to be limitations for this. And I think you know, what we need to be aware of that this technology is not about replacing people, it's about augmenting um, the process, about making sure that we're using human interaction on the most complex elements and that the, the basics are done right first time. We get to brilliant basics quickly. But there's a lot of buzz and excitement, rightly so, about Gen AI and AI at, at the moment. and. Some of the use cases we've described are, are, have huge potential, massively exciting, but it's really important to remember that construction is a, it's the biggest industry in the world. It's one of the most fragmented. It's mainly made up of small and medium, uh, you know, artisanal um, craftspeople and, and small construction companies. And, and it's always going to be a hands-on physical business um, that relies on skilled, hardworking people on the front line. And that, that isn't going to change anytime soon, right? So I think we need to be need to recognise that um, AI, as Darren says, has an opportunity to you know, augment the work that we do on a site. Um, it has an opportunity to you know, accelerate design and, and streamline the design process. But it's not going to change the kind of physical act of building stuff out on a out on a building site. The other kind of um, reality check we need to do is that this depends on data as well. And this is something that most industries struggle with, that construction particularly struggles with because of this level of fragmentation. And you need to have a solid data layer to be able to deliver many of these use cases. One of the challenges is that the industry from a, a, an engineering perspective is based on hours. And suddenly there's a the potential to do things instantly at, at, in a nanosecond at zero real cost. Um, how do we monetize that? How do we incentivize the technology companies, the engineering companies and the owners to collaborate? Ultimately, an owner will benefit when their schedule is reduced, their cost to build and time to market is reduced. And we're talking about 
projects that are often in the millions, if not billions. So how do we help the ecosystem, the supply chain ecosystem, you know, benefit from that transformation? Because otherwise there'll be as much of a risk of um, low and slow adoption as there is of going too fast and getting it wrong. Question that I'm hearing a lot is, what does this mean for my business? Is it kind of exciting hype that I can kind of ignore for a few months or is it something that's fundamentally going to change the business? And yeah, every business will be different, right? Um, but the way we think about it is, as an engineering company, how can you use AI to more accurately predict and monitor energy consumption in a in a in an office building in real time and, and offer yeah, real time solutions to optimize energy consumption? I would be looking and guiding um, organisations towards finding some low-hanging fruit, something that is contained and managed that you can change as a whole system level. Because this isn't just about adopting technology quickly, it's about changing the sales and marketing teams, the incentives for those sales teams to sell a new solution in a different commercial way. And the potential impact of working new in a new way, where it's not an hours-based business or, or a lump sum type business, is quite huge and I could see some companies getting stuck uh, with the enormity of this. So picking something that is relatively easy to adopt the technology but run the whole changes through the entire life cycle of the services that are provided to the clients through to commercials and billing and make sure the whole team are working in that way almost as a product team and taking that to market and learning from that is really important. Although the technology is relatively new actually the approach to um, transformation is one that we've, we've we've seen before. We're familiar with, right? So that and, and there's two dimensions to it. The first is, you know, identify the business domains and the use cases where this is going to create most value, right? So it might be to improve your win rate in tendering. It might be to reduce accidents on site. It might be to improve engineering productivity. But which, which use cases are going to create real business value? And then on the feasibility, right? So do we have the data to be able to do this? Do we have the um, systems? And if not, is it going to be a significant investment to get the right systems in place? Do we have um, actually the skills to help us build uh, and administer the technology and, and either build or integrate with the right models? And then from that, develop a list of a you know, short list of use cases and go and execute the pilots before scaling, right? But it's it, it's very easy to get excited about the technology for the technology's sake, but it must be grounded in in, in business impact at the end of the day. I think AEC companies need to focus on uh, the value pools. Where is this going to have the biggest impact, but not go too large at the beginning? Really get something proven and working and deployed and get the rest of the organization behind it. That's how I'd be tackling this. But also, you know, engineers like to design. They like to own and build, and there's going to be a, a a preference to own and build this technology. And I think that existing technology companies and startups are, are pure play um, invested in this area already and have already been moving in this direction. So adopting and working the, with the right technology partners from the outset is really important.